recently nightcap brought up a topic about should the nfl have fully guaranteed contracts like the nba and it made some pretty good points i did link the full video down in the description below i did however cut up this that 30 minute video into about 10 minutes of the, what i thought was the most in interesting parts uh but if you want to watch the full thing if i missed if you want to find out some missing context from the original video it is linked in the description below for you without further ado let's get into it the 2024 all nba teams were announced all nba first team Giannis antetokounmpo luka Doncic, shea gilgis alexander nikolai nikolai that's his, nikola <laughs> yoke nikola Jokic, jason tatum first team all nba luka by earning first team all nba is now eligible this summer for a Supermax contract, Ocho. Check yeah. this out. How much? Five years, $346 million. And for me, when I heard that, like some five years for 346, that's a lot of freaking money, but it, it gets better. 69 million a year. And and I listen, it, it, Luca it's, 25, Ocho. I just want you to know that. Hey, I just oh, he gonna hit, I mean, he gonna hit him across the head again then. For he sure. gonna he gonna hit him across the head again and you know and why this is so important for the nfl in relation to the nfl to me is because most players out the league by the time they're 25 and if they got a rookie deal if they got a first round draft pick and they got 20 30 million from being that first round top of the first round top five top ten then maybe you made some money off the nfl but if you was a late round pick third round pick fourth round pick the money get a little funny after that and you may not even get a second bite at the apple the fact that luca got his rookie deal he he may even resign for 350 million and he gonna get another bite at the apple again when he's 30 years old like that's insane that's insane i i asked someone in football i said which with y'all arenas with y'all arenas if y'all fought like the NBA players, y'all right. will be billionaires quick. And here's what, this is how I, I viewed it. You guys play what, one game a week? Yes. Yeah. How yeah. many times do you practice? You uh, practice Wednesday, four. Thursday, Friday. But what, what Allen Iverson said, we don't, we not practicing. We going to see you in the game, sir. Right? So when you're thinking about the NFL, th that arena... <laughs> Y'all arenas is so big. Imagine the money they keeping from you. Like, right. yeah, this is how much money the NBA owners is making. When there's a lockout and we say, hey, let us see your books. Hey, oh, I say again, how much you want? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, what I tell you, Ocho? Hey, yeah. You see the difference? The yeah. difference is, is that because they've gotten guaranteed money for, let's just say for the sake of argument, three to four years, mm -hmm. they'll say, you know what? We're going to shut it down. Mm -hmm. Baseball <laughs> shut everything down. It and for me, from what I got from Gilbert Arenas when he said that was, one, <clears throat> NBA players have enough power to even request the owners show their books and two, that the owners are making so much money that they know they're giving the NBA, even though the NBA players are making amazing money, some of the best money in all the professional sports, they still could be making more. And the owners are still paying even them peanuts for those top 400 players. So I think for me, the NFL players do not have the power to even do that because their contracts aren't guaranteed. They know, you know, you gonna and you gonna see later in the video. They're gonna talk about how they gonna talk about how NFL players will fold so easily with, at the threat of a lockout. So it's it just it's it's interesting, man. It's just like this is a very interesting topic, a very interesting discussion, and I would really love to know what y'all think about this in the comments below. Especially if you a basketball, football fan, you keep up with these things like I do. I love knowing your opinion. Business for them too. <laughs> yes. It's a business for them, too, and yeah. they're going to lose way more money than you are going to lose. They that won't, because you know why? Gil, their money's guaranteed because ESPN, Fox, are going to still broadcast those games. games you yeah. see, the thing is, if the, if the network said no, unless we get the real players, we're not, then, then and only then, will 
the, 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 the owners acquiesce. But the problem is heads got to get cut off. See, the problem is y'all got too many people voting. Y'all got y'all got 55 players, right? Yeah. All of them mm -hmm. get a vote? No, yeah, they, everybody vote. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. Not when you not when you trying to change. Everybody right. don't get a say so. So right. that means the star players only get the vote because I know the the star players are not thinking money. They're thinking future. So if a dude need his rent paid, he going with the owners. I need to lock out the end. And that's half the damn team. Yeah. I don't need them voting. I need the oh, people who's making deal. who's thinking about, well, if we hold out, we can possibly get this. Deal. Part of the lockout. Right? Y'all should, should be waking, make, making money way more than us. Because let me tell you. And look, the reason I put that clip in because Gil is absolutely right. The size of an NFL stadium and the size of a basketball arena are two completely different metrics. There are so many, because the players only get like a, a percentage. The salary cap is only based on the percentage of like some part of the revenue. It's not even based on like concessions and, you know, merchandise. It's not even based on all the money that's get, that gets pulled in a day. So the players are getting such a small percentage. These salary caps don't have to be 300 million. For 53 players, that's a, that's a very small cap for 300 million. It can easily be uh, uh, four, five, six hundred million. They'll still be fine. So these owners got the money to do it. They got the money. Go get it. The owners did. The owners, when the players, the players had years left. Yeah. And they they extended the deal. Once they extended the deal, Roger Goodell go to the networks. We got 10 years of labor peace. We want to redo it. We want to redo it. We want to extend the deal. So guess what they did? ESPN, Fox, CBS, NBC. Redid, redid it. Redid the deal. Redid hey, it. Amazon said, hey, can, can, can we get in? Yeah, yeah how, how about this here? We're going to take Thursday night football, and we'll give it to you, Amazon, but it's going to cost you a bill. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll take you that. Two say, you two say, hey, you know, hey, hey, you know what? We want to be a network. We want to be mm -hmm. taken serious. So mm -hmm. we know we need live events. What, what y'all thinking, Roger? Well, you know, the direct TV about the end of uh, right. what y'all looking like. We got mm -hmm. X. Okay, you're in. Guess what? Oh, hey, 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 hey. I heard y'all got some Christmas games coming, Ocho. Mm -hmm. Can we get oh. in? Netflix. Big really? Y'all are streaming? Y'all y'all want y'all yeah. like NFL football too? How about we let y'all stream the three games on Crimble? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when you like this is a <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Shady killed me when he hit that pose, man. He killed me with that one. Uh, and the thing is, what resonated with me with this segment of the show was after the owners convinced the players to settle for peanuts, they then went back and renegotiated contracts with big corporations to make millions of dollars or billion, my bad, billions of dollars over the next 10 years and then cost them nothing but 300 million a year in salary cap. No matter how much the quarterbacks get paid, it's still that team can only spend 300 million a year, most. So after they negotiate that contract with you, they finna go get this guaranteed money for 10 years. They're gonna give you partial uh, incentive-based contracts, everything like that. But when they go get their money, it's gonna be fully guaranteed and they can negotiate it by percentages and all that stuff. It's crazy. It's crazy how little the players get in comparison, even though they are making all the money. They make the money, but they don't get it. The lockout get in. And, and, and the, I, funny thing, the funny I, thing about it, when you, when you think about what, what these companies are spending, if Netflix is spending a billion, how much you think they're going to make? Mm. I, I, that, how much you think they're going to make? I think, I think people, people need to understand that. If they, if they spend the billion, and to us, the casual, regular person, like with regular, regular person see, like but, we are, <laughs> if they spend in a billion, what you think they finna make? Yes, yeah. sure. But the casual fan will empathize with the billionaire oh, more wait. so than the millionaire. millionaire. Oh, that's wait. the problem because if the salary cap is $255 million, yes, that's sir. the cap. Well, each 32 teams each mm -hmm. get $300 million from right. the network deal. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, you got naming rights for your stadium. Mm -hmm. You got local TV. You got concession. You got interest into the, you got uh, tickets. Merchandise. You got parking. Merchandise. You, got, you got merchandise. Yeah. That's outside of your 300 million. Now that lets you know how 
They're 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 siding with the billionaire and complaining to the millionaire. But that's the point of this, right? Because the owners don't have a face. The players do. And this is why I say this is when you lock out. They can use replacement, but I can tell you who didn't pay for replacement. Mm. Um, Netflix, mm. Amazon. Mm -hmm. They didn't pay for replacements. That's a good one. I like that. Players, Guess I like, what? I like, I like where you're going. Let them. Let those companies bully them. So they're going to come in like, uh, what's going on? We didn't pay for these dudes. We paid for Patrick Mahomes Thanks. and Kelsey and his little girlfriend singing and dance. That's what we paid for. <laughs> so if you don't get them back on the field, we're going to cut our deal. The, the end of the CBA is coming up. Guys, for the next three years, I need you to be as conservative as possible. Yeah. Please, no big purchases. Say, say, say because this thing might go on for a year. Yeah. For a year. And so I'm going to need you guys to be banked up because they say everybody, even the average the average uh, uh, American, should have three months banked up. If yeah. you lose your job, you need to be able to survive for three months. Three months, yeah. Until you find a new job. Hopefully it comes sooner, but if it doesn't, mm -hmm. you got three months. No, no. Man, I the average NFL player, Gil... <laughs> oh, say you slipping. You slipping. Three days. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Joe, they got three days. Oh. Let's talk about three months. Three oh. days. Hey. You go back and study the history of the league and you look at 82 and mm -hmm. you go back and look at 87. 87 was the last strike. And I'm old enough to remember it because I was in college. Bruh, when you go back and look, and I ain't going to call nobody names, but when you go back and look at the names that crossed the picket line because yeah. they needed them paychecks, I'm talking yeah. about MVP, Defensive Player of the Year. I yeah. ain't just talking about no 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 ranky dink guys. I'm talking. Go back and look it up, chat, and look at the guys, the first guys mm -hmm. that started crossing the line, and yeah. you are gonna say, "Oh my goodness!" And that's why I say I don't give them no votes. I don't listen when you try. You, to although, how you not gonna give an MVP of the league a vote, Defensive I Player of the Year a vote? When you're trying to make a change, think about it. There's change needs to be made. If we can keep it the same, that means I'm going a, I'm to a hold ground knowing you're going to fall. So it's going to always be against the player if they can't hold out. Because I, I, I'm not going to give you nothing knowing that you're going to take it anyway. I'm giving you crumbs. Right. Yeah. Right? Hey. Talking about a bunch of dollars making $500 million and y'all talking about, yeah. man, we out here. We out here with the CTEs and all. Y'all should be getting $600 million, dog. <laughs> hey. Contract. The fact that you don't have guaranteed lets y'all know that y'all, y'all, they, they know y'all going to falter. When, he, when, Kil, when players, Gilbert Arena said players. that, I said, hey, man, he need to be a new president of the NFLPA. He need, to, he need to go ahead and, hey, man, let's go ahead and elect Gilbert Arenas right now for the NFLPA. So we can get this money, or so they can get this money, huh? Because I ain't gonna be able to get it because I ain't in the NFL. But like Shannon Sharp, I, I feel like he's alluding to Lawrence Taylor. I want to say Lawrence Taylor, he, but he he alluding to the fact that people, men in the NFL, struggle so much with financials and uh, money spending and money saving and just financial literacy all together that they spending money on houses and women and babies and just as ask, ask AP how many kids he got. Ask them. That boy stay. That boy AP ain't never gonna get out of child support. But this, they have, they have so many expenses that it keeps them from being strong when they need to be strong to get even more money. Because Gilbert Reed has said it himself. Said y'all with the with the like with the risk to life and limb that you guys play with down in down in down in down out week in week out year in year out. Y'all should be pulling in six hundred million dollars a year. Well, not a year, but $600 million contract. So you should be well taken care of. You're risking your life. People have uh, self-deleted themselves to donate their brain to science because of CTE. CTE is a very real thing. And at the end of the day, the owners don't have to pay for anything. They don't have to pay. They, they pay peanuts and, 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 and get steaks. Like, they eat steaks. That's, that's what they get. They give you peanuts and they eat steaks and uh, caviar and pork, I mean, lamb chops, all that. They, they eat the best of the best and give you peanuts, man. So... Gilbert Arenas has made probably the best points in this segment in defense of the NFL, which was uh, very interesting to me. I mean, it's too many players. It's too many players. Thank though. you. It, it would never work. Thank too many. Thank you. You, you, you got, got 15 you got, versus you got, 53. 
Yeah, you got 53 yeah. on the squad. That'd be impossible. I do think this is one of the, the bigger sticking points with the NFL, primarily because they have to have so many players on a single roster. And if each player gets a vote, then the people that's on the back end of that roster that's barely making 300 k and they got to feed kids and all that stuff, they going to fold. Plus, in the NFL, it's always somebody It's always somebody hungry that want opportunity to play in the NFL just to say they play in the NFL. So if it is a strike and all the starters sit down, it's going to be some guys, some backups that's going to step into those roles to get that money. They gonna, it's just going to happen because just it's always a need. Yeah, the, the NFL will probably take a hit for a couple of weeks, but those players are going to end up wanting those checks again, and those backups are going to keep competing to get those checks. So it's a it's a perpetual cycle that may never get fixed, honestly. They honestly may never get fixed because, you know, there aren't parameters in place by the NFLPA to really give those that should have the power the power. Because it should be players – if you're on a – a year-to-year deal, and you, you really shouldn't have a say so on the, in the long-term longevity of the NFL. It should be those Patrick Mahomes, those guys with three, four, five-year contracts uh, that's going to be that's actually going to be in the NFL for the next three to five years, you know, multiple years, and not just you know on the, you know in and out of roster. So, I do think that there should be some parameters in place when it comes to voting because there's no reason that. Patrick Mahomes had the same vote as as a me. If I was on the roster, I'd be at the back of the roster, and I got the same voting power as Patrick Mahomes. You know, it just it, it, there should be some, you know, as far as those big decisions to push the league forward. It should be some kind of uh, system there to you know value certain things. Now, how much? How much? How much? Gil, let me ask you a question. Ocho, you tell Gil how long they've been playing the preseason games, mm. and you play the same price for a preseason game than you do a regular season regular game, season and half the time the guys that's going to play in the regular season ain't playing, and the fans still show up, right? Yeah. See, yeah. The, see, the owners know, the owners know the fans are loyal to the team, not, not the player. players. Players, nope. These companies are paying billions for a certain product. If the product is not, just like when a player get, think about this in the NBA, when a player gets hurt and he's missing games, who's the first one to start complaining though? The fans. Hey, 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 you got in. That's why MB, you better bring your ass on out here, MB. Mm-hmm. We sold these, we sold these playoff seats at a price that they mm-hmm. came to see you. That's what I'm saying. Like, like go back, um, do your research on the lockout in 2011, right? Yeah. 450 NBA players voted. Tally up the votes. I guarantee you it's going to be about 75 to 100. Oh, they didn't <laughs> let the rest of them jokers vote. And the thing about this one, I, I mean, it's like I say, with the NBA, man, it's only 400 players. And the fans are a lot closer. It's a lot more intimate in the NBA as in the as as opposed to the NFL, because you can buy courtside seats and, and smell the players and touch the players, high five the players, dance with the players when they score. You know what I'm saying? You can, you can do a lot. And the, the 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 I guess the experience at an NBA game is way different than the NFL game. The players are always covered up helmets. You know, you, you can't really see their face. All right, you can't see their face, so it's, it's not the same level of intimacy. To, I guess to put the word a, a different word, it's not the same level of connection to the audience as it is with the NBA. So it's, it's different, man. The, the power an NBA player has and the power that the NFL player has as far as fan experience and everything like that, it's different. It's just different, man. It's just it's different. It's different. And it's difficult to navigate that as opposed to the NFL, NBA. Only but see that, but see, <laughs> in our CBA, everybody gets a, everybody gets a vote. Ocho yep. vote is the same as Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. And the guy that's on the practice squad I mean, the guy, the guy, the fifty-third guy, his vote matters just as much as Joe Burrow, just as much as Josh Allen. I hear yeah. you what you're saying. Think about, think about what I'm saying. There's 450 players. They only, t- when we turn them in to Chris Paul, only 175, only 75 to 100 was reported. He said, "Hey, we couldn't reach the rest of these people. This is what we got, though." Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Thousand football players can show up. When y'all turn them papers in and there's only 300, there's a, 300. We don't need the other 700. We don't care about those votes. Those votes go against the right agenda. Against the cause. All in is all I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. It could be a I, real deal. I wish, I wish we could be as unified as you got because what you're talking about is solidarity. 
-hmm. What you're talking about is unity. And we've seen that from other sports leagues. We've seen that from the MLB. We've seen that from the NBA. We have yet to see that from the end. I don't, I, it's not like I disagreeing with what you're saying, but mm -hmm. Ocho and I, we're talking about from experience. And what think. we've seen is we that we can't get that level of unity. So that's the, the gist of it, man. Like I said, I really enjoyed this segment. If y'all like this cut up version of the that longer portion, and y'all let me know in the comments below, and I keep them going. It took me a long time to cut this video up, but I, I honestly enjoyed it. So full video is linked in the description below so you can get all that missing context that you didn't get from this show. Uh, let me know what you think. I'll catch y'all on the next one.